Mars is a planet that's seen as humanity's next challenge when it comes to space exploration. When we landed on the moon over 50 years ago, Mars was immediately mentioned as the next stop on our intergalactic journey. Experts predicted that we'd have pitched up on the surface decades ago, but that time was constantly getting pushed back due to the lack of funding and interest in space programs. But there's now a renewed interest in getting to the red planet. Interest that's been boosted by multi-billionaire investment from the likes of SpaceX and Blue Origin. It's very clear that the next step is Mars and we're full steam ahead to try and get there. But is this such a good idea? Getting there isn't going to be easy, let alone settling on the planet, which is the overall long-term goal. Today we're going to look at why going to Mars might be a bad idea. Before we look at this, a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and also to subscribe to Brain Impact for more videos just like this one. For now, let's look at why Mars is a bad idea. When JFK set out the plan to go to the moon, he said he chose to do it not because it is easy, but because it is hard. This is definitely the case with Mars and far more difficult than a lunar landing. The question is, is it just too hard for us to conquer at this point? NASA wants to build a colony on Mars by 2030. Elon Musk wants to send a million people there by 2050. It's difficult enough to land people on the surface, but it's a lot easier than landing on the planet, bringing astronauts home, and then establishing a colony on the planet. We're going to focus on the difficulties of establishing a community on the red planet. First off, there's no magnetic field. On Earth, we're treated to a magnetic barrier that exists due to the way our molten core works. Mars used to have this same luxury 4.2 billion years ago, but because of Mars's small size in relation to our planet, its core became inert and this meant the field was lost as solar winds smashed into it. This had huge implications for the planet. It went from being a water-covered life-giving entity to a red wasteland very quickly. With no magnetic field, the planet couldn't contain an atmosphere like Earth's. All water was lost to space and Mars became exposed to huge amounts of radiation. This is bad news for humans. Without wearing special spacesuits at all times, we would all be exposed to this radiation and our cells would mutate quickly, not giving us a massive amount of time to enjoy our new home. Solutions have been suggested to remedy the lack of a magnetic field. These range from building underground, creating a frozen carbon dioxide barrier, and to use surface dust to make protecting ceramics. All of these imply that a colony would be very limited to where it could live and the logistics of all these will take an unfathomable amount of resources. Our next issue is the weather. If you think the weather is bad where you live, well, just be glad you don't live on Mars. As we mentioned in the last point, Mars has a limited atmosphere. On Earth, our atmosphere is what keeps our weather regulated. With an atmosphere of around 1% the density of our own on Mars, the planet doesn't have the ability to trap heat in the same way as Earth. Think of a greenhouse, but with all the windows smashed. The effect is an average temperature of minus 63 degrees centigrade, and on the poles this can reach as little as minus 125. Add to this frequent dust storms, which, along with a lack of atmosphere, lack of volcanic activity also contributes to. Not to mention the frozen carbon dioxide snow and the ability of the atmosphere to boil a person's blood. And you can see why Mars's climate, or lack of it, is so inhospitable to humans. We're halfway through our video now, so just a nudge to remember to like this video and also click that notification bell to get the latest videos on science from Brain Impact. Now, back to look at Mars. If these issues we've looked at weren't enough, then let's add in the lack of gravity as well. Mars has 62% less gravity than on Earth, and you only have to look at what we already know about the effect on low gravity to humans to understand why this is such an issue. On Earth, gravity is constantly pushing on us without us realizing. Gravity acts as a constant weight machine, as we need to fight against it all the time to move even if we don't notice. When astronauts live in the International Space Station, they are subject to almost no gravitational forces, so need to exercise frequently to make sure their muscles don't waste away through the lack of use. The need for an artificial gravitational pull on Mars might be essential as it's not just muscles that are impacted. Our skeletal structure would be as well. This also wastes away with lack of gravity and calcium stored within bones finds its ways into other parts of the body, causing illness such as constipation through to psychotic issues. 
In summary, we need gravity, and without it, our bodies go into imbalance. This is all assuming that you could nourish the body that you had on Mars. This is a difficult task in itself. Although we think that there is water on Mars, it's currently locked away under its rocks and dunes, so it's difficult to get to, and assuming we did, it's not as straightforward as just drinking it. Perchlorate salts in the water would be at lethal volumes. This toxic liquid would need a reverse osmosis process before we can even think of consuming it. Then there's the problem with air, or rather, the lack of it. This problem could be solved relatively easily if Mars was close to Earth. The International Space Station is able to use its solar power to split water into oxygen and hydrogen to recycle for breathable air. However, the ISS is replenished by Earth frequently because, in space terms, Earth is just a block away. On Mars, there'd have to be a way of sourcing clean water from the planet itself, and as we've already discovered, this is far from straightforward. These are all physical complications with settling on Mars. This isn't even taking into account the mental implications of going there. The planet is about 300 million miles away from our own and takes seven months to get there without even thinking about coming home. Needless to say, anyone who undertakes this journey is going to be very isolated with only the company of their fellow crewmates. You only have to look at what isolation due to COVID does to mental health to see the hidden effects this causes. Depression, insomnia, anxiety, fatigue, and boredom are all factors that astronauts would have to contend with. You might think that a radio link back to Earth might help, but this takes 10 minutes for one planet to get to the other, so a real-time conversation isn't going to be happening with friends and family anytime soon. Bear in mind the lack of physical environment that we need to keep our minds healthy, outdoors, fresh air, regular exercise against our gravity are all essential to our mental well-being. Unless we can replicate this on Mars, which would be a very difficult task, then we're going to be lacking these. All of this is likely to have a very detrimental effect to those who make the mammoth journey to the Red Planet. So this is why Mars is a bad idea. There's a reason why there's limited life on the planet if indeed there is any life at all. A lot of work would have to be done to be able to settle on Mars and live a healthy life on the planet. Currently, we don't have the capacity to fulfill this need, but in the future, this may change and Mars could be our new home, assuming we could overcome these challenges. Would you like to visit Mars? What do you think about it becoming our new home? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching. Thank you.